Hey everybody, it's Phoebe from Quilted Pig. Welcome to my studio. I came in to film this because I got a new machine and she just got delivered today and I thought you might like to see. Now, this is a 1934 school bell featherweight. And once we get this open, I'm gonna try to be really careful here. Once we get this open, you'll see why they call it a school bell. Yes, I know you're not supposed to cut towards yourself, but here we are. There's two layers of tape here. that knife up. Let's see what we've got in here. Kind of an interesting way to package that. This is um, like you would probably buy at Lowe's or Home Depot to insulation for your house. It looks smart because the seller was able to cut it just to exactly to fit. I like that idea. So we've got a, another box inside this box. I'm gonna set this box down on the floor, get that box out, and then we'll come back. So now we are at our box within a box. And as you know, Featherweight comes with the wooden case. I'm guessing that's what this lump is about, that that's probably the case handle. So I need to be extra careful around that. Get the box knife out again. see what we've got. Okay, nothing is nearby this, so we'll go ahead and cut it with the box knife. I'm trying to be really light with it so I don't get too close. Yes, that is what the lump was about, but then there's an extra piece of this just right over the handle part. Oh, we just packed in there good. So this machine comes from a family where she's only ever had one owner in that family. She's got a little wear and tear on her, but you know, she's almost 100 years old. Okay. Let that box out. Big bang. Whoop. Okay, and we've got some tape. I'm gonna try to just rip this off instead of cutting it so that I don't have to get too close to things with the knife. Definitely a good wrapping job. <laughs> okay, there's the tape on this. save all of that stuff because I occasionally do sell some machines from my collection and uh, it's a great way to already have something that's made for putting one of these in shipping. I 
I didn't know they still sold green plastic wrap. I remember that when I was a kid. You could buy the green or the red <clears throat> to wrap around cookies and things like that at Christmas. that she's saved in this box. Ooh, the latches are so cool. This is, the, I believe, the oldest style of case. I'm not going to lift it up by the handle for that reason. I'm trying to find the edge of this plastic wrap. Looks like it might be underneath. Yep. <laughs> you ever seen that game where you wrap up the um, the plastic wrap and you put little toys and goodies like little money and things like that and you unwrap it like at Christmas that's what this feels like <laughs> oh look at the front isn't that pretty so let's get you guys zoomed in and we'll take a closer look at what we've got in here all right so we're all zoomed in let's take a look at what's in this case I haven't opened it yet um, I do see one of the leather pieces is missing from the top, but I think, again, it's almost 100 years old. So we're going to unlatch it. A friend told me one time that you should always hold your hand over the latch and not just go plick and flick them open like you would a suitcase, because they are delicate. Okay. Oh, a sweet little note. I hope it's sweet. <laughs> I assume it's sweet. Dear Phoebe, thanks for purchasing this beautiful 1933 Singer Featherweight Sewing Machine. May she bring you unparalleled sewing pleasure from this day forth. How sweet! A little piece of ephemera to keep in her case. Okay, so then we've got some packaged materials here. There is a tray for this case, which is cool. Let's see what we've got in here. Ooh, it looks like maybe a key. I didn't remember it saying it came with a key. Interesting. Okay, had to get some scissors for this. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Little bitty sewing machine oil can. You know, obviously you're not gonna use that. But isn't that cute? I didn't realize they were that short. So set that to the side. Looks like here we've got our spool pin holder. Find the tape. So when you ship a featherweight, you want to take the spool pin off because it gets broken so easily. And it's just one little screw, so it's really not a big deal to take it off. But it would be a big deal if this arrived and the piece was broken. So we've got the little spring in the felt. I'm guessing that's a new felt. And then the spool pin holder itself. Also using more of that insulation. It's a good idea. Okay, we'll set that to the side. This bag's kind of heavy. Like a Miller bag. Just 
thought I was going to open that easily. Okay, this is the foot pedal. So it has been rewired, but look, it's the original pedal. That's so neat. How interesting. I don't think any of my others have that part showing. Okay, and then like I said, here's the tray. So this is where you would keep your bobbins and things like that. Um, the bobbins just poke down onto that. And then, you know, your book things. <clears throat> set this pedal back in there to set that aside and it looks like we're here almost almost there got some more foam in here really this is smart these I use this when I made my design wall I used a thinner version and I want to say they run around 10 or 12 dollars that's a great packaging way it's like I said you can cut it any way that you want fit around whatever you need it to fit around okay so here we are to the manuals and I believe that this said that the manual was a reproduction but let's take a look so yeah looks like a reproduction featherweight book from featherweight shop I think that's where that came from it looks new. Anyway, so it has a manual. And then we've got a manual for the zigzag attachment. Now I have several of these attachments, but I don't have books for any of them, so that's nice to have. And here, looks like we've got a table clamp. I don't think I've seen one of these before either. Let's take that out and take a look at it. I'll have to double check the listing from where I bought this to see what this is for, if it's one of the feet. I really don't know. If you know, go ahead and put me a note in the comments and then we can learn something together. To me, this looks like, I have a lot of toy machines and to me, this looks like one of the things you um, clamp a toy machine to the table to help, help it to stay steady. One more thing. Maybe. I know that's the attachment box down in there, and I think I'm going to leave it in there and go ahead and pull out the star of the show. Are you all ready? Okay, I'm going to set this case on the ground. There's a little screw in there. I'll have to check in on what that is. Here we are. Okay. Oh, I just want to sing, isn't she lovely? So pretty. Like I said, due to her age, she's got some use on her. But how beautiful. So you can see the decals. We have this, the, the scroll plate. And then like I said, that spool pin holder will go right here. And so it's just a one, one screw thing. So let me go ahead and get that set up and then we'll take a look at how she sews. So I've got some thread in the machine now and I'm using a thread stand. I happen to actually just finish a project with yellow fabric. So that's what we're, excuse me, yellow thread. So that's what we're gonna use. What I found interesting about this, once I got it threaded, where any other machine I've ever had at this point, or excuse me, this point, the thread went in from this direction, but on this machine, it goes in from this direction. So I thought that was kind of interesting. 
And same thing down here, it comes in from the back instead of from over here. So anyway, just thought I'd share that. So, like I said, I just finished a project that was with yellow, so I have a bobbin all wound up. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in here. This is the vintage bobbin case that it came with, which I think is cool. You can see it's tarnished because it's been used and it's been loved, and this is a new bobbin. Okay. Bring my thread up, and I don't always worry about that, but the first time after you put in a new bobbin, I do. And then also, um, since I just put in this needle, I want to make sure that the needle is going to um, go in the hole properly and all that. And I'm just going to slide these scissor handles under here to snag that thread so it'll come out. Okay, and I've got my pedal plugged in, but I don't have my pedal where I can reach it. So I'm going to move that real quick. The tensioner looks different. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, y'all, we're fixing to find out. So I went and got some dark green fabric because I felt like that would be a good contrast with this yellow thread. And we are gonna give it a go. Again, this petal's a little different. I've never seen one like, oh. Never seen one like this before. And it looks like this needs to be loosened up too. And that's the bobbin winder over here. Oh, listen to that. Oh, nice. So this is set at, looks like, around 10 stitches per inch. You know, on a featherweight, it's not really precise. But the stitch is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, and I did promise you guys that I would tell you why it's called the school bell. So let's see that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this thread out of here, out of the top, and I'll turn it around so you can see it. I've actually never used one of these, so hopefully it won't be that hard to do from the, from the backside. Um, so when we bring our thread in to wind a bobbin, comes down here, oops, it came out of the thread stand. Come, comes down here, it came out of the thread stand again. It's underneath there, and that is actually the tensioner for when you've got a bobbin on here and you're winding the bobbin. So that's why it's called that. So it would be there, where the others have what looks more like a tension disc that you see here, they're there. But this one, like I said, has that little school bell on it. So anyway, I hope you liked the unboxing. I thought it was fun. I'm really excited about this machine. I'm glad she's here. Her name is Priscilla, so I'm glad to have her join the family. If you have any questions, just uh, put them down in the comments, and I would love to hear what you think about it. Talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.